Hey guys, welcome to WPF Tutorials. Today we will be continuing our talk on dependency properties. Last time we created a simple is purple dependency property and implemented the property changed callback. Now today I want to talk about property validation, coercion, and value precedence. Now to illustrate property validation, I want to quickly create a simple text block control that has two properties. One, a number value property that can only be numeric, and two, a forced integer value that if you set it to true will coerce the number value to an integer. So for this, we need to create two dependency properties under a new class called my text block, which inherits text block. Now since we've already shown last time what a dependency property looks like and how to create one, I'm just going to use snippets this time. So we're just going to insert a new snippet of a WPF dependency property registration and it's going to be called number value and it will be oh it will be a string yes and the owner type is going to be my text block and for the default value we want it to be zero so now all we have to do is just implement the validate value callback method is valid number which only expects a parameter of type object now I already have this written so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. So now that we have isValidNumber implemented, we can pass the address of isValidNumber to the validate value callback so the property system can call it when it's ready. So now that we've done that, let's check out what happens when we go to our XAML view and try to set number value to something that isn't a number. and access the local namespace and my text block and let's try to set number value equal to let's say 3.14 well this is numeric so it's not going to throw up any errors but watch this it doesn't like that at all and actually if we go to our error list we're going to see WPF tutorials is not a valid value for property number value which is it's really cool that it can do that so let's just set that back to 3.14. Let's go ahead. We're, we're going to use this in a little bit. So let's go ahead and give it a name of my text. Let's just go ahead and also wrap it in a stack panel while we're at it. So next we're going to talk about property coercion which is basically a property system feature that prevents values from getting out of sync or containing invalid data. But before going into coercion, I want to talk real quick about value precedence. This is a really, really interesting concept. So when a dependency property gets set by us through XAML or code behind, that value is called the local value. The local value is only the third place that the property system looks to resolve the property's effective value. The first place the property system looks to find the effective value happens to be the result of a coercion. Secondly, it then checks to see if the value has been changed by an animation. And if that hasn't happened, then it continues to use the local value in the third spot. So I'm going to post the link below the video so you can see what other locations the property system looks to to find an active value. So let's go ahead and get back to the task at hand. Let's complete the coercion method for the number value property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in a function called coerce to integer. And the only thing it's going to do is just check to see if the value is a decimal. And if it is, we're going to round up to the nearest integer. Otherwise, we're just going to return the value that's passed in. So as you can see, that's what it's doing here. It says if not integer, then round up and return that value. Otherwise, just return the value that was passed in originally. So next we're going to go ahead and create the force integer property, which I'm just going to go ahead and copy in because I already have the dependency property defined. So if the force integer value gets set to true, we want to coerce the number value property to being an integer. Since force integer's value is defaulted to false, we need some way of detecting if the property has been changed. In normal CLR properties, it would have been safe to put the custom logic in the force integer's setter, like right here. But since we're using dependency properties, it's not safe to do that because set value can actually be called directly. And if that were the case, then any code in the setter of the property would never be called. So 
instead of putting the code inside of the setter, we have the property changed callback, which is part of the property metadata object. The property changed callback method expects two parameters, the dependency object and the dependency property changed event args. And let me copy in my implementation of force integer property changed. So all this is doing is it's just checking if force integer is being set to true. And if so, then it's coercing the value of the number value property. So with that being said, we need to actually go back and make a couple of changes to the coerce value function, coerce to integer. So what we need to do now is we actually need to come in here and create a my text block variable and then it cast the dependency object to my text block. Next, so what we want to know is if my text block force integer is true and that it's not an integer. And if that's the case, then we will round up and return the integer value. Okay, so first there's a couple of things missing here. Um, first we need to add in the coerce to integer callback. And we can do that by setting the property change callback to nothing because we don't need it in this case. And then passing in the address of coerce to integer. Okay. The other thing we're missing is that up here we forgot to add in the um, address of the force integer property changed callback. So let's do that by just typing in address of and force integer property changed. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to actually be able to test this. And so what I'm going to do is just create a couple of controls. One of them being a checkbox control with a name of chk force integer. And then we're going to add a button that is called btn get number value. Okay. Let's go wire these up in the code behind. So we're just simply going to come up here, find our check force int, and whenever it is clicked, we want my text force integer to be set to whatever the value of checkbox is. Okay. And the other thing is on button click, we want to send off a couple of messages. And this is just going to give us the active value and the local value. So what I want to do real quick is set a couple of breakpoints so we can kind of get a good idea of what's going on here. So let's see. That's a good breakpoint. Here's a good breakpoint. And let's see what's going on in the coerce to integer. So we're going to run it and we're going to click get number value and our active value is 3.14 and our local value is 3.14. But when I click force to integer, you'll see that the checkbox value gets put into the force integer dependency property. And when that happens, force integer property changed gets called and it checks to see what the value of force integer is and it's set to true. So when that happens, we're going to coerce the value of number value property, which is going to take us down here to coerce integer. And we're going to see is force integer set to true, which it is, and is the value that you're sending me a decimal? And it is. So what it's going to do is it's going to return the value of the decimal rounded up, which is going to be an integer of four. And so we'll come back and click the button and active value is four, but the local value is still preserved at 3.14. And so this kind of brings us to why dependency properties are called dependency properties, because the active value that you're going to get back depends on a number of things. Mainly is coercion involved? Is there an animation involved? So on. So that is actually it for today. I hope you have a better understanding of dependency property validation, coercion, and value precedence. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, 
leave those below the video. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching, and see you guys next time. Later.